I'm a big supporter of CMDA, and I'll have to say the experience that I had on a mission trip, I probably got more out of it than I gave. To be able to share the gospel one-on-one -on -one and have someone accept Christ, that was a new experience for me. And it emboldened me to the point where when I came back, my practice was different. I, I am a much bolder witness. Uh, I've always been a little reticent to bring up spiritual matters with patients, and now I'm not. I really, uh, it has changed my outlook, and I think it does the same thing for the students, but at a much earlier point in their career. I got this piece of paper, I think, in my mailbox that said free lunch. It was the Wednesday Docs Forum. A couple Docs Forums after that, at least, uh, the free lunches went away, but I kept going and started to form relationships with uh, different colleagues through uh, CMDA and with uh, a lot of the uh, doctors as well. Rick Donlin spoke at the first um, CMDA Docs Forum and I got to know him shortly after. He has invested time in me, he's prayed for me. Getting to know him, I've got to know a lot more uh, um, that have just had a profound impact on me. It wasn't a pastor, it wasn't, you know, it was these doctors that were saying, um, you know, there's there's nations out there that have not heard the name of Jesus. We can have something so much greater and we, and we can have the joy of glorifying God and, and, uh, and uh, we can take risks and we can do things that, uh, that again, others think are, are kind of crazy or, or different, uh, but we do it uh, because we love God and we, we love the needy and we love the poor and we, we want to take care of them and we want to care for them because Jesus cared for them. There are two major ways that CMDA has impacted me for the rest of my life. One is during the first mission trip that I took with them, I was exposed to a ministry called Downline, a ministry here in Memphis that teaches biblical discipleship. And through the teaching I got during that mission trip, I've completely changed my understanding of what it means to be obedient to the call of Christ. The second thing that CMDA has done for me is to allow me to give. Uh, giving is a great joy, uh, but you know, I was a member of seven different medical societies before I joined CMDA. All of them were basically trade unions to, for docs, but now I can commit God's resources to an organization of healthcare professionals that's building on eternity through missions and through the development of medical students. So I was really excited to see that there was the Christian Medical and Dental Association. I was so excited because um, I am a Christian and it just really sparked my interest. I really enjoyed the Docs Forums meetings because each speaker had a different lesson that I could take and apply to my life and apply to the future. They consistently reminded us that, no, you're not going to be a doctor first and a Christian second. You're a Christian first and a doctor second. And to keep your priorities in line, um, they reminded me to you know, use my skills to help other people and not only wait until I'm done with medical school, but to start now in impacting people's lives. A lot of people ask me, why are you a non-medical professional involved in CMDA? But it does sort of get back to my interest in finance. I am always looking, rightly or wrongly, for a good investment. And when I see what CMDA does, not only discipling the next generation of medical professionals, but also in defending the faith reaching the nations with the gospel and what they do locally for the poor and underserved of Memphis. I can't find a ministry that can compete uh, in terms of return of investment on my time and my money. So my first year of medical school, I knew some older students who were involved in this ministry called CMBA and I, I checked it out. Um, and honestly, it was uh, one of the best decisions I ever made. 
I've been a Christian for the majority of my life. Um, and somehow along the way, I think I missed Jesus' strategy. And through my involvement with CNDA, I think my eyes were open to the fact that Jesus' strategy was to make disciples. Through a series of events that I honestly believe were completely spirit-led, I found Dr. Michael Farmer, who um, was a speaker at, at Docs Forum. So what that turned into was uh, a summer of me working with him, seeing his life, seeing how he practiced, and uh, a summer of, of teaching and also a summer of doing. We took one week um, and went to uh, different inner city areas here in Memphis. And we just went out and told people about Jesus. And the amazing thing was that God allowed me to lead six people to Christ that week. I mean, there, there's just no greater joy um, than knowing that God has given you the privilege of telling someone the best news they can ever hear, the, the news of the gospel. And um, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Wow. Not having CMDA would have been a very significant void in medical school. I knew that having regular fellowship with other believers was going to be really important. All of the doctors and um, other professionals who I met and spoke with and um, heard at Doc's Forum and in other venues, they all really stressed the importance of being involved in um, local missions within the city, um, wherever I am, and um, the importance of being a disciple maker now. And that it's not just something that you do on a short-term trip, that, it, that those two lives have to be congruent, that they have to both be happening wherever you are. It's not something magical that happens when you get off the plane. Um, that it has to be lived now in order to be able to be genuinely lived that way later as well. Medical school is definitely the hardest thing I've ever done and I wouldn't have been able to do it without CMDA. Absolutely would not have. <laughs>